The topic for today's class is diffusionism. This is a very important topic so far as theories of social and cultural anthropology are concerned. In the early part of the 20th century, several schools of thought emerged which maintains that societal change occurs when societies borrow cultural traits from one another. This view is known as diffusionism. Now what are the different types of diffusion? Diffusion may be direct, indirect or forced. Diffusion is direct when two cultures trade, intermarry or wage war on one another. Indirect diffusion occurs through the agency of third parties. Diffusion is forced when one culture subjugates another and imposes its customs on the dominated group. Let us go through the basic postulates. Any cultural group will adopt a culture trait of other cultural group only when it would be meaningful and useful either economically or socially or both. In the course of diffusion, culture trait may not remain in original form, but changes can take place in it due to different environments. Process of diffusion of culture traits always follow from a developed culture into an underdeveloped culture. Process of diffusion may create culture change in groups adopting culture of other groups. Sometimes borrowed culture traits get assimilated easily, but sometimes they are responsible for many changes. Lack of transport and communication facilities, ocean, river, mountain, desert, etc. operates as obstacles in cultural diffusion. The major contributions of diffusionists. Three schools have made diffusion basic to their formulation and study of cultural dynamics. They are the English group composed of Eliot Smith, W. J. Perry and their followers, the German-Austrian culture historical school founded by Grebner and W. Smith and the American group associated with Franz Boas, Krober, Lowy and others. The British School of Diffusionism derived its theory from research on ancient Egypt. Smith and Perry were specialists in Egyptian culture and had carried out research in Egyptology for a number of years. From this, they concluded that all aspects of civilizations, from technology to religion, originated in Egypt and diffused to other cultural areas. To explain the view that some cultures no longer had cultural traits from Egypt, they resorted to an ethnocentric view that some cultures had simply become degenerate. That is, in contrast to the civilized world, the lesser developed people had simply forgotten the original ideas borrowed from Egypt. The German school of diffusionism differed somewhat from that of the British. They argued that several early centers of civilization had existed and that from these early centers, cultural traits diffused outward in circles to other regions and peoples. This view is referred to in German as the culture crease, that is culture circles, school of thought. In examining why some primitive societies did not have the characteristics of civilization, the German school 
like the British diffusionists, argued that these people had simply degenerated. Thus, diffusionists' views, like the unilineal evolutionary views, represent ethnocentric perspectives of human societies outside the mainstream of Western civilization. Frederick Radzl felt that the most important consideration was to discover from where culture traits came and where they went. According to him, culture traits may become simplified or elaborated in their course of diffusion or migration. According to Radzl, every similarity cannot be taken as proof of historical connection because objects of material culture must have certain features in order to have any utility. For example, a canoe pedal needs a blade and an arrowhead or a spear must have a point. If however, there are other similarities which are not related to use, they serve as proof of historical relationship. Thus, if pedals have similar incised ornamentations or spears have feathers attached to their shafts, this cannot be accidental. But they certainly imply borrowing or migration, even though respective cultures may be widely separated in time and space. Radzl called this principle as criterion of form. Leo Frobenius, a student and colleague of Radzl, took the idea of diffusion several steps further. According to him, historical connections implied much more than transmission of single culture traits because whole culture complexes were often involved. Thus, he asserted that migration was an important factor of explanation, then diffusion, in explaining cultural similarities. He thus added another criterion of form, which he called as geographical statistics. His geographical statistics meant that one should count the number of similarities. Radzl's criterion of form and Leo Frobenius geographical statistics were vigorously combined in the strategy of Culture Crease School, whose main figures were Grebner and Father Wilhelm Smith. Grebner applied the culture circle and culture strata idea on a world basis. The two basic rules accepted by both Grebner and Smith in connection to culture circle and culture strata were as follows. First, the criterion of form as called by Grebner or criterion of quality as termed by Smith states that similarities between two culture traits which do not automatically emerge out of nature should be interpreted as resulting from diffusion, regardless of the distance which separates the two instances. Secondly, criterion of quantity, as called by both, states that the probability of historical relationship between two items increases as the number of additional items showing similarities increase. Father Wilhelm Smith, being a follower of Grebner, applied the criteria of form or quality and criteria of quantity to divide the culture of the world in different strata and circles. Smith was responsible for the final elaboration of the developmental scheme also employed by Grebner and Frobenius. They postulated that a few original cultures 
spread out from the point of origin in time and through space like ripples on water to produce all world culture to the ripple effect of the culture growths they gave the name culture circles which provided the title by which the austro germans are best known that is culture crease or culture circle school franz boas was the founder of american school of diffusionism clark wisler and alfred krober were his devout followers it is historical in its approach stressing field research and restricted reconstructions of history rather than the comparative studies on a worldwide basis that characterize the two preceding points of view franz boas became a vigorous opponent of the unilineal evolutionists he maintained that these 19th century schemes of evolution were based on insufficient empirical evidence he proposed that all anthropologists do rigorous scientifically based field work to collect basic ethnographic data boas's field work experience and his intellectual training in germany led him to conclude that each society has its own unique historical development this theory came to be known as historical particularism it maintains that each society must be understood as a product of its own history this view led boas to adopt the notion of cultural relativism that is the belief that each society should be understood in terms of its own cultural practices and values one aspect of this view is that no society evolved higher than another thus we cannot rank any particular society above another in terms of degree of savagery barbarity or civility boas call for an end to the use of these derogatory ethnocentric terms clark wisler pointed out that neighboring cultures are alike and he called an area of similar cultures a culture area wisler also plotted what he called the culture center that area with the greatest concentration of the most typical traits of the whole region he also attempted to delineate universals of culture which are classes of culture traits that all culture possess according to alfred krober individuals were unimportant in understanding culture change and other cultural phenomena and that cultures could be understood only in terms of interacting cultural patterns and historical events those patterns or configurations in effect controlled individuals krober was also a configurationist he sought a means of ordering data or classifying or characterizing societies by their basic patterns the idea behind configurationism is that each society has a cluster of characteristics that mark it as different from all others krober also added new dimensions to the culture area concept by correlating environmental conditions with native american cultures early diffusionists views were based on erroneous assumptions regarding mankind's innovative capacities like the unilineal theorists they maintained racist assumptions 
about the inherent inferiority of different non-Western people. The diffusionists assumed that some people were not sufficiently innovative to develop their own cultural traits. Another limitation of the diffusionists' approach is its assumption that cultural traits in the same geographical vicinity will inevitably spread from one society to another. Anthropologists find that diffusion is not an inevitable process. Societies can adjoin one another without exchanging cultural traits. However, diffusionism as a means of understanding societal development does have some validity. For example, diffusionism helps explain the emergence of the classical civilizations of Egypt, Greece and Rome. These people maintained continuous contact through trade and travel, borrowing many cultural traits from one another, such as writing systems. In the 19th and early 20th century anthropology, there was an important debate between the diffusionist theorists and the evolutionary theorists. Evolutionary theorists held that universal psychological features had generated similar inventions in different parts of the world. While diffusionists believed that important cultural elements had been in very few parts or even in only one part of the world and had spread outwards from there by diffusion. These theorists preferred careful historical geographical analysis of the relationships between cultures and culture areas to the speculative history of the evolutionists. In modern anthropology, the concern for historical reconstruction and the debate between diffusionism and evolutionism has largely given way to different kinds of study of social structure and historical process, though acculturation studies maintain an interest in the processes whereby cultural elements may be transferred from one group to another and the manner in which such elements are transformed and adapted to their new context.